Okay, so thank you to all of you who have joined today. Um, based on those poll questions, it looks like we had a lot of parents on the line, um, as well as some coaches and some other participants. So we're very glad that you could join us over your lunch break today. Um, my name is Nikki Chambers, and I'm the new competition coordinator at the Missouri Valley Office. Um, I just started in March, and I'm very excited to be here. We're getting ready to hit the busy season, but it's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm excited. Um, I also have on the line Marissa Moment Brown. She's the director of community tennis, um, and she helped me set up this webinar, so thank you, Marissa, for that. Basically today what we want to talk about in this presentation is that we want to discuss the recently approved changes to the 2014 National Junior Tournament structure. I'm sure there's been a lot of word going around in your districts about the changes. Um, so what I want to talk about today is how, what these changes entail and make sure that you have all of the information that you need to pursue your 2014 goals. So to give you a little bit of background about how these came into fruition in 2014. Um, in March of 2012, the USTA Junior Comp and Sportsmanship Committee approved a series of changes to the National Junior Tournament structure. And once these changes were released, um, the constituents were expressing a lot of concern with the changes. And as a result, the USTA conducted a listening tour where they traveled across the country um, listening and documenting the concerns of some of the key constituents. And they also opened up an email exchange where constituents could write in with their concerns. So after several months, uh, the group reconvened to address these concerns. So they met in December um, as a committee to evaluate the feedback that was coming into play. And then in April, so just last month, April of 2013, um, the amendments that they made were approved. And so we have our official changes for 2014 have been released. So that kind of leads us, gives you some background, and leads you into where we stand today. Um, so we want to provide you with the most updated and accurate information as possible so you can appropriately, appropriately prepare for 2014. So I want to make sure that we're transparent and that we um, provide you enough information to be successful at all levels. So today, what we're going to discuss is what those changes actually are, the rationale behind why the decisions were made, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how it affects section and district play. And then at the end of the presentation, we're going to talk a little bit about how you can plan for 2014. And then we will, at the end, open up time for some questions. So just to give you a little background about the USTA, if you're not familiar, um, you probably hear the word section and the word Missouri Valley a lot as you're browsing the website. We are one of 17 sections in the entire USTA organization. You can see there that we are comprised of seven districts. We have Iowa, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Heart of America, Missouri, Kansas, and St. Louis. So we have seven districts that comprise our section. In addition to this, the USTA has committees um, that make decisions. So a lot of the changes that we're going to discuss today were made by both the National Junior Competition and Sportsmanship Committee and our Missouri Valley Junior Comp Committee. Before we get started, I want to go over a little bit of Junior Comp terminology. Um, these are terms you might read frequently on our website or you might hear in conversations. And I'm going to use them a lot throughout the presentation, so I want to make sure that everyone is clear on what these terms mean. So the first one there is a quota. Uh, you'll see this often. A quota is a number of reserved spots into a tournament. So for national tournaments, they often reserve quota spots for each section. And then in addition, each section for some of our bigger tournaments reserve quota spots for district. The second term is an endorsement. Um, you'll probably hear this a lot in conversation as well. It's when a district or section awards a player a quota spot into an event. So there's different ways that a player can become endorsed. Um, it depends on the section or the district, how they want to go about that. Um, sometimes it's an endorsement tournament, so if you're browsing Tennis Link, you might see that this is the Kansas endorser. Um, there's some districts go off of their ranking lists, uh, but it just varies from district and section how they want to endorse players into tournaments. 
The third term is designated. Um, you'll see this in our point levels and values. Um, designated is when each district and or section is permitted a certain number of tournaments that count for higher section or national level points. So we'll go over this in a little more detail later on in the presentation, um, but that term is used frequently just to say that a certain tournament is worth higher level points. And the fourth and final term I want to go over is the Missouri Valley Standing. Um, this is a points per round ranking issued weekly and based off a player's most current record. So at the Missouri Valley we publish these every Wednesday. They came out this morning um, and it's based on points per round at the tournaments from the previous week. So this is a lot of how we do our selection criteria. So here we have a little question for you. Um, we're going to do a little bit of trivia throughout the presentation to keep everyone awake and keep it a little bit interactive. So go ahead and vote on the screen. True or false, endorsement is the number of spots reserved into a tournament. Okay, the answer to this question is a false. A quota is the number of reserved spots into a tournament. So there we go. Another thing I want to go over briefly before we get into the actual changes is the concept of earned advancement. This is something you will hear often, um, probably in presentations, um, and the recent changes definitely reflect the concept of earned advancement. So earned advancement, there's no set definition, but essentially it is where a player must win at the level below before moving up to the next level. So you can see from this graphic on the screen that we want our play to definitely reflect um, advancing from the district to the section, the section to the region, and region to the national. So the, um, the USTA is trying to place an emphasis on qualifying through sectional play, and then you'll see throughout the changes that the section is also working to increase the value of district play. So you'll find more opportunities at the district level in 2014. So the goal is basically to ensure that at each level of competition, the draws are compiled of players with equal skills and abilities. So they're pushing and challenging our US juniors at each level of competition. So again, this is something you'll see reflected throughout the presentation. So as I mentioned before, the USDA had conducted a listening tour and opened up an email for constituents to offer feedback. And once they gathered all the feedback, they noticed several common themes um, of the concerns that were being expressed. So one of the first and most obvious concerns was that constituents felt that the number of draw spots was being greatly reduced and that the opportunities to play at the national level were being reduced. And so this was an obvious concern for the constituents. So the USTA definitely took it, this feedback into consideration and they constructed a calendar that included several new tournaments. So we're going to go over those a little bit here. They came up with five new level one tournaments. These are the National Masters. They reinstated the National Winter Championships. They opened up a National Doubles Championship that will be level one in 2014. And then they created two new team events. There will be a boys and girls 14 intersectional team in 2014. And there will also be a national spring team event in 2014. And as you can see from the screen there, there is also going to be a 64 draw qualifier into the national hard court and national clay courts. So again, that's another opportunity to compete nationally and to try to earn your way into a national level one tournament. There will be two level 1A tournaments in 2014. Uh, the first is a boys and girls 14s and 16 national sweet 16. And then there will also be a Boys and Girls 12 through 16 tournament held concurrently with the Easter Bowl.
For national level two, there will be three segments of national selection tournaments. So three segments with four sites for each segment. So those are level two opportunities. For level three, there will be one segment of four national selection tournaments that are designated as level three. There will be a warm up before the national hard court tournaments that will be level three national points. And then this is where the concept of designated comes into play. Um, national has allowed each section to have two tournaments that will be designated as national level three points. So you'll be able to compete at the section level for national level three points there. And we'll go over what those tournaments are here in a little bit. And then finally, uh, National Level 4 tournaments will have two segments of closed USTA regional, one segment of open regionals, and then again we have section designated. We get four tournaments that will count as National Level 4 points. So not only did the USTA create these new events as opportunities in 2014, but they also worked to increase the draw sizes at several tournaments. So in 2014, you'll see that the boys and girls 12 divisions at the National Hard Courts will, be, will increase from a draw size of 64 to 128. The Easter Bowl boys and girls 12 through 16 divisions has increased from a draw size of 32 to 64. The Thanksgiving National Selection Tournament has increased from a draw size of 32 to 64. And then we will see the addition of a boys and girls 12 division to the National Gold Ball Team. So again, you can see here lots of new tournaments popping up as well as increased draw sizes. And although there is still a reduction in draw spots, the reduction is a lot less, only between 24 and 31 percent depending on age division. So that's Definitely, you can definitely see the USTA working to create new opportunities there. One of the other major concerns that they identified throughout the listening tour and through the email was that there was not enough opportunity to be seen by college coaches. So part of the USTA competitive pathway includes coll collegiate varsity tennis. Um, and there has been much concern over the development and exposure of U.S. junior players. So to address these concerns, they really worked to uh, create tournaments during time frames where they felt collegiate coaches could come and see the kids play. So as a result, you will see again the qualifier for the Summer USTA National Championships. You will see the reinstatement of the National Winter Championships during that winter break period. You will see the National Gold Ball team event move to March. And then you will see an increase in the draw sizes at the National Thanksgiving Selection Tournaments um, during a time where collegiate coaches can come and see the kids. So I definitely worked to create time slots where collegiate coaches are available. And the third and final concern, oh, here's a question, sorry. Will there be a national winter championship in 2014? All right, it looks like the majority of you are getting this question right. There will be National Winter Championship in 2014. That's being reinstated, so that's very exciting. Good job. All right, so the third concern that the USTA really worked to address was economic considerations. So tennis is an expensive sport, and the constituents felt that because there was a reduction in the amount of tournaments, um, that were available, this would also drive up the cost because you don't have as many options. So we're going to discuss a little bit about what they did to address these concerns. 
The first is that the Memorial Day Regional will now be a national selection tournament. So previously the regional was you only had one uh, choice from one site you had to play within your region. Um, it will now be a national selection tournament with four different sites. So you'll have a choice of four sites over that holiday weekend. Second is the Columbus Day Boys and Girls 14 through 16, Sweet 16. It will now become a national selection tournament with a choice from four sites. And you'll see the draw size will obviously increase there as well. It will no longer be a Sweet 16. You'll have a draw size of 32 at each site. The Thanksgiving Regional will become a national selection tournament. So now again, when you previously had a choice of one site, you now have national selection tournament, and you have an option of four sites over that Thanksgiving holiday. And then finally, that Thanksgiving national selection draw size has been increased, so the opportunity is available to more players now. So those are the changes at the national level. I know it's a lot of information to soak up. Um, we will be having, or you can visit the USTA website to see the full calendar. Um, I know this is kind of chopped up a little bit, um, but definitely feel free to visit the USTA website and we will be posting um, the full calendar on our website um, for your reference and we'll go over that a little bit more. So now we're going to segue a little bit into the section. This is where we're going to talk a little bit about designated tournaments. Um, we have this chart. We will have it available on our website for your reference. Um, but this chart basically shows our tournaments for 2014. In the center column, you can see what national level points these tournaments are given. And on the far right, you can see the section level. So starting with the section level, you can see that our Sweet 16s are our highest level tournament for the Missouri Valley. They will remain a level one. Our super tournaments will be our level two tournaments. Our team events and our winter team championship, as long, along with the futures, will be level three. District designated will be level four. And then other sanctioned districts events will be level five. In the center column, you can see what each tournament is designated for national points. So. As you can see, our June Sweet 16 is our first level three, and our November Super is our second level three. So I would definitely recommend keeping this chart handy so that you can review uh, what points you'll be given at each event. So we get two level threes from National, and that is the June Sweet 16 and the November Super. In addition, we get four National Level 4 tournaments designated to this section. So you can see that our November Sweet 16 is our, one of our Level 4s, and then our other three Supers will be our other three Level 4 tournaments. So definitely reference this chart. Um, again, we'll have the full calendar for you to be able to review fully in more detail. But those are the tournaments at the section level that are given National Point values. So now we're going to talk a little bit about what our tournaments are going to look like in 2014 at the section level and how you're going to qualify into these tournaments. So we're going to start with our futures level tournament. Our futures level tournament in 2014 will be a section level 3 event. No national points will be awarded at these events. New for 2014 is that the draw sizes are now going to be limited to 32 in singles and 16 in doubles. And this differs from this year in that currently the outdoor futures have an unlimited draw. But in 2014, all futures events will be limited to a draw size of 32 singles and 16 doubles. So how are you going to get into a futures level event in 2014? There are two ways. The first is by district endorsement. 
So as we talked about previously, each district will determine how they will endorse their players into the futures, whether it be through an endorsement tournament by the rankings list, um, but that's up to each district and they will submit to us who their endorsement list is. So we will reserve seven quota spots for the district endorsement and then the remaining players will be selected off the Missouri Valley standings list. So again, it's really important that you talk to your district about how to get endorsed to the tournament, if that's how you want to enter the futures, um, and that you're communicating frequently with them about how the system works at the district level. Let's move on to our supers. Supers in 2014 will be level two section event. Um, as I mentioned before, we received two uh, level three events for national points. So our November super will receive level three national points. And then our three other supers will receive level four national points. So again, you can reference that chart if you're wondering what point values are associated with these tournaments. The draw size uh, for 2014 for the Super will remain the same. It'll be a draw of 32 singles and 16 doubles. And then how you qualify into a Super, you'll definitely see that concept of earned advancement come into play here. There are three Futures level events as well as our Winter Team event prior to the first Super. So to qualify into the Super, you will take the finalist of each of the previous Futures and the team event, and that'll be our eight spots into the Super, and then the remaining players will be selected off the Missouri Valley standings list. So again, you can see you're earning your way from the Futures into the Super here. Now we'll talk a little bit about our Sweet 16. Uh, this it will again be our highest level section event. It'll be our level one events. The June Sweet 16 will, will receive national level three points and the November Sweet will receive national level four points. So again, I just wanna reiterate visiting that point table um, if there's any confusion about what level of points you're receiving at each tournament. The draw size will be 16 singles and 8 doubles, so that has not changed. And then again, the concept of earned advancement, your results at the previous super, so we take the top 8 from the previous super, and then the remaining will be based off the Missouri Valley standings list. So again, you can see at the section level, we have the concept of earned advancement. Um, you have the districts working to endorse players into the futures. Your results at the futures determine partially your entry into the super and then again your results at the super could determine entry into the Sweet 16. So there's a clear pathway here of earned advancement. So let's go over a little bit more some considerations for 2014 as you're maybe planning your schedule out. Um, Something new for 2014 is that the Missouri Valley will now be a calendar year. In the past, um, you've seen segments. The year has been broken up into three segments, but we'll now do a 12-month calendar. So that's something new for 2014. Our calendar will be comprised of six futures, four supers, and two sweet 16s. And then in addition, we'll also have the 12s and 14s team events and the winter championships. Doubles will be offered at all Missouri Valley events, so it's an opportunity to tune up your doubles game and to gain more points there. The futures are now limited to a draw size of 32. So because of this, it's really important to start considering playing at the district level. You'll have more opportunities locally. So here's that point here. Um, currently, in 2013, each district is designated one tournament for district designated points. In 2014, each district will be allowed up to four district designated tournaments. 
So there's going to be a lot more value at the district level. You'll have opportunities to earn section level points at four events as opposed to one. So again, it's going to focus on a concept of earned advancement where your results from each level factor into your selection for the next level. So you can see, again, think back to that pyramid going from the district level to the futures to the super and then on to the sweet 16. And then finally, the Missouri Valley receives two national level three events and four national level four events. So that's a little bit of review of what we discussed in the presentation. Here we got a little trivia question again. What will the USTA Missouri Valley calendar look like in 2014? Will it be composed of three segments, four segments, or a calendar year with no segments? Good. And then we have a second question. How many district designated events will each district have in 2014? Zero, one, two, or four? You guys are good. You're paying attention. There will be four district designated events, so good job there. So again, I just want to reiterate the concept of our committees. Um, the changes that occurred at the section level that we discussed today were voted on and approved by the Junior Comp Committee. And up here I have listed who the contact is for each district. For Heart of America, it's Elliot McDermott. Iowa, it's Jeff Benson. Kansas, Simon Norman. Missouri, Larry Hogness. Nebraska, Justin Bigsby. Oklahoma, Eric Wiedemeyer. And St. Louis, Allison Wilson. So if you do have any questions about maybe what the district designated events will be in 2014 or um, how you can qualify into the futures or what the district structure is going to look like, um, I would definitely recommend reaching out to your junior comp counterpart for your district. So again, um, if there's any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the Q&A box and we'll be happy to answer a couple. If we can't get to all of them, I am going to take the questions and compose a Q&A fact sheet and put it on our website. So again, uh, we will have a special page designated to 2014. Um, hopefully that will get up sometime this week or soon after where you can revisit some of the things that we discussed today. I'll post the, a lot of the documents that you saw on here for your reference. And for any other questions, you can always feel free to contact me at chambers at movalley.usta.com or just give me a ring in the office at 913-322-4832. All right, so we did have a question, and it's a good question, about why the November Super is worth more points than the November Sweet 16. And the rationale surrounding this, the JCC voted to approve this in the hopes that the larger draw size, we'd have more kids earning national level three points. Because the super is a draw size of 32, you'll have 32 kids having the opportunity for national level three points as opposed to 16 players. And second question I'm seeing here is, are all district events worth section level five points? And the answer to that is no. Um, again, we will have four district designated events, which will be worth more points than other district events. So if the tournament is a designated district event, it will receive level four section points. And all other sanctioned district events will be level five points. And we have another question. Will the 12 and 14 team events continue in 2014? And the answer to that is yes. We will have the 12s and 14s team events. There's a question about what happens to points earned in the past. 
So those will stay. It will continue to roll and be based off a 12-month calendar. So we're not going to wipe your points out completely. Um, it'll continue to roll into 2014 um, until it rolls off because of the 12-month mark. So are there any more questions? I'm not seeing any more on the screen. I'll give it a few more minutes. We had a question if the team events would still receive national points, and the answer to that is no. We've only been designated two level three tournaments from national and four level four tournaments from national, so the team events will no longer receive national points. And I see another question up here. If the November Super is worth more points, then why not make the Sweet 16 a 32 draw? Uh, and that's a great question. I think the JCC, the rationale behind it was to make sure that the Sweet 16 is still, there's sort of a, that's what it's been known as for a long time. Um, and it's our level one tournament sectionally. Um, so our top 16 players are still receiving level 1 section points. So we wanted to make sure to keep it a special event. So that's definitely a great question. So there's a question about how there are 8 spots into the super. So once you reference our calendar online, you will see that there are three Futures level events as well as a Winter Team event. So that's four tournaments prior to the Super. So we're going to take the finalists from each of those four tournaments and qualify them into the Super. So that's how that works. I think it will make a little more sense when you see the full calendar laid out. And again, you can reference that on our website once we get the 2014 page created. There's a question about if there's any changes to where the futures and supers are held within the section. Um, we actually had all of our bids turned in on May 8th. So right now we are in the process of working with the Sanction and Scheduling Committee as well as the Junior Comp Committee on awarding those bids. And so those should be released shortly. Um, however, we're in the process of determining where the events will be in 2014. So those have not yet been determined.
There was a question about how many uh, quota spots we'll have into the regional tournaments. Um, that is, we will have four quota spots. And again, I'm going to publish um, what has been released from National onto our website where you can reference um, how these draws will be determined at the national level and the quota for each of the events will be on that document. But for regional uh, events, we have four quota spots for the Missouri Valley. I'm going to take one more question and again, whatever questions we didn't get to today, I will compile a Q&A document and publish it to our website. Um, so I don't want you to feel like I forgot about you if we didn't get to your question. Um, so the last question is, will each district designate, designate what their four tournaments are and will they be at a similar time as the other districts? So that's definitely something you can talk to your district representative about. Um, the district will be required to notify the section of what those events are and we will have those on file. Um, but as to the time frame of each, we allow some flexibility within each district. So that's all the questions that we have time for today. But again, I will um, sort through the questions and make sure to document them and publish them to our website along with other information regarding 2014. Again, if you have any further questions um, and didn't document them within the webinar, please feel free to email me or give me a call at the office. I'm always happy to help and want to make sure that you have all the information you need to be successful in 2014. So thank you again for joining us and we'll let you get on with the rest of your day.